Hello, this is Moret Kadar, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use paint.net to make JPEG pictures into PNGs, which means that those are pictures with a see-through background or no background. And we are going to use mostly the different selection tools. We are going to use the Rectangle Select tool, the Lasso Select tool, the Ellipse Select tool, and the magic wand. So I've copied a picture from Google Images and I'm going to make a new document here and paste that picture into it. To open a new document you can either click that clear paper with a plus symbol on it or go to File, New. This window tells you the size that this document is going to be and it's the same size as the picture that I've just copied. So if I click OK here and now I need to paste my picture. In order to paste, you can again either click the little paste button or go to edit, paste, or if you know the shortcuts, which are very handy, control V on the keyboard. There we go. So this is my picture of David Beckham. And what I want to do is remove all the background um, in order to have just his face left with a see-through background, which I can then use in my collage work. So when you paste a picture, you see this little um, blinking kind of uh, frame. I'm going to click enter, so it's set in the frame. And now I want to start removing the background. So the, the square select tool, the rectangle, as it is called, you click on your mouse, uh, you can draw a uh, rectangle and the blue area is what you selected. If you hold the shift button down it turns into a perfect square. I let go of the shift button and it's again it's a rectangle. Same goes with, with the ellipse. This is my ellipse select tool. If I just draw it freely, <coughs> excuse me, it's an ellipse, but as soon as I click the shift it turns into a perfect circle. So it really depends on what you want. But we are actually going to start with a magic wand. And the magic wand selects an area of a certain color and it stops where that area meets a different color. In other words, if I click on the black here, it's going to stop where the black meets a different color. So let's try that. There we go. Now the blue area is what's selected. So you see it did stop here very nicely on the line of the face, but it went into the hair, into the beard and into his jacket. And that's not cool. In order to change that, we have up here the tolerance. And tolerance, in other words, would mean the sensitivity of the magic wand to change in color. So if I bring that down to, let's say, around 30, and I click the black again, you can see that now it made, made a much better selection for what I need. I can try to bring it up a little bit. There we go. I'm quite happy with that. And I want to cut those pixels. I can do it either by clicking the scissors or going to edit, cut, or simply the shortcut, control X. There we go. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to try to do the same on this side. And I'm just selecting small areas and cutting them. See, it doesn't work here because the change of color here is very similar from brown to brown. So let's see if I bring the tolerance down a little bit. And I just select different areas. And I cut them. I'll try a bit of a higher tolerance here. No. Okay, so the magic wand took me a certain way. That's pretty good, but it's far from finished. I've got all these things I need to get rid of. Now I'm going to look at the lasso. There's the lasso select. And the lasso simply allows you to draw shapes. And everything that's in blue will be selected. And don't mind if it kind of goes over areas you don't need. The important thing is that when you let go of the click, the left click of the mouse, that's what you've selected. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to work around the side of the beard. I'm going to drag it over what's left of his jacket. And down here 
and it's easy to work in smaller sections. Okay, so I'm going to work around here, cut that. Okay, so that's another tool you can do. If you're not happy with the selection, you can just select elsewhere or click escape. One last tool you can use to uh, get rid of areas is simply the eraser. So I can select the eraser. I can change its size up here, the brush width, say 15. And now I can go ahead and I can simply delete certain areas. And again, it's easy to work on smaller areas, but if that happened to happen, then undo. Make it a bit bigger. It's a bit big. Okay, let's say that I'm happy with it. And you can see that each selection tool gives you a different result. But let's say for my purposes, this is good enough. Okay, what's left to do now is to get rid of all that empty area. I don't need to be so big. So I'm going to select the rectangle select. Put my little cross up here and drag it down and right. And I'm going to crop. Crop means that everything that's not selected is being deleted. And what's left is only what is selected. So this is my crop icon. Right up here. There we go. Beautiful. Very happy with it. Last thing left to do is to save it. Click the save. Save as. And make sure that save as type is PNG. That assures you that it's a see-through background. I'm just going to change the name. Beckham one. Make sure you know where you save it. So for me it was an ICT. Okay, five. JPEGs, PNGs, and GIFs. And save. Don't worry about this save configuration. You can just click OK. There we go. Here is our Beckham face with no background on paint.net using the various selection tool and cutting off the unnecessary parts of the picture or in a more professional language the unnecessary pixels to be left with just the face. I hope you find that helpful and I'm looking forward to see what you're going to do with it to create amazing collage work on the